Hello and welcome back. I'm Steve and today we're visiting Stockholm, Sweden. As always, if you like this travel video format, I'd appreciate your support by clicking the thumbs up and subscribe buttons. As well, to be notified of my new uploads, click the bell icon. In addition to being one of my favorite cities, there are five not to be missed sites when visiting Stockholm. They are the Royal Palace, Stockholm City Hall, the Vossum Museum, Drottningholm Palace, and Gamla Strand. If you have time, or if it's of personal interest, the Nobel Museum or Jurgarden may prove interesting. Stockholm's Royal Palace is the official residence and office of the Swedish King. Additionally, the offices of the Royal Family and the Royal Court of Sweden. The original palace was destroyed by fire in May of 1697. Construction on a replacement began later that same year, with Phase 1 being completed by 1709. Due to the costly Great Northern War, construction was halted and did not recommence until 1727. The final phase of the palace you see today was completed in 1770. Constructed in 1911, Stockholm City Hall is much like any other in that it's the Municipal Council for the city. What makes this city hall unique, other than the beautiful location and amazing architecture, is it's the yearly venue for the Nobel Prize Banquet and Dance. Each 10 December, which by the way is the anniversary of Alfred Nobel's death, the formal dinner banquet is held in the Blue Hall. Following the multi-course dinner for 1,300 attendees, a dance is held in the Golden Hall. Sweden is a country whose history is inextricably tied to the sea, with thousands of coastal islands and lakes. It stands to reason Stockholm would have an amazing maritime museum. The Vasa Museum is located on the island of Djurgården, approximately two kilometers from the town center. Its prize artifact is the almost fully intact 17th century ship that has ever been salvaged. Launched in 1627, the Vasa was a 64-gun Swedish warship. She carried 145 sailors and 300 soldiers. Sadly, she sank on her maiden voyage in 1628. Drottningholm Palace is the private residence of the Swedish royal family. It's located approximately 12 kilometers from the town center. Although you can take a taxi, in my opinion, the best way to travel there would be by boat. Cruising the Swedish islands and lakes is absolutely amazing. The boat journey will take about one hour, but you'll quickly realize that the boat trip is one of Stockholm's highlights. The original palace was built in the late 16th century, however, destroyed by fire. The reconstruction started in 1660 and took 12 years to complete. In addition to the palace, tour the property and enjoy the Palace Theatre, Chinese Pavilion, Baroque Garden, and English Garden. Gamla Stan, also known as Old Town, is an island directly across from Stockholm's town centre. Its colourful 17th and 18th century buildings and cobblestone pedestrian screen make for a scenic, leisurely walk. The streets are lined with souvenir stores, stylish bistros, pubs, and cocktail bars. Obviously, when we mention souvenir stores, we can conclude we found Tursville. With that said, don't plan on dinner and drinks being affordable. I've already discussed the Nobel Banquet and Reception at City Hall. If you have time during your visit, you may want to check out the Nobel Museum. Located in Gamla Stan, the museum showcases information about the Nobel Peace Prize and prize winners. 
Church Garden is an island a short two kilometer walk from the town center. In addition to the Bossa Museum, Church Garden has an amusement park, Viking Museum, the ABBA Museum, yacht harbors, and extensive stretches of forest and meadows. Basically, it's Stockholm's favorite in-city recreation area. Regarding the ABBA Museum, it's not really a museum. It does not conduct research, it is a for-profit business, and has no collections. So, although it's a museum by name only, if you're a fan of the group ABBA, you may enjoy visiting. Assuming you're flying to Stockholm, upon arrival you'll find the airport to be modern, clean, and efficient. Custom and border control has always been very quick when I've used the airport. The Arlanda Express is a train that runs non-stop service between the airport and Stockholm Central Station. I've used the train several times and have no issues. If you feel comfortable enough, after a long haul flight, you'll find it an enjoyable way to get downtown. The journey takes about 20 minutes, the seats are Scandinavian comfortable, and there's ample room for luggage storage. Stockholm's peak summer month is July, where high temperatures will average 24 degrees Celsius or 75 Fahrenheit. Nighttime lows will average 15 degrees Celsius or 59 Fahrenheit. Coldest winter months are December through February, where daytime highs will average 1 degree Celsius or 34 Fahrenheit, and nighttime winter lows will average minus 3 degrees Celsius or 27 Fahrenheit. One thing to keep in mind when visiting northern cities during the summer months is the lack of night. In May, June, and July, Stockholm will have an average of 18 hours of daylight. During these months, night is never really dark. In fact, Sweden boasts 56 straight days of daylight in summer. Stockholm is comprised of 14 islands and more than 50 bridges, so be sure to pack comfortable shoes. And remember, even though the temperature may be cooler, the sun is just as dangerous. Please don't forget your sun protection. Among other things, Stockholm is famous for meatballs. You know, as in Swedish meatballs. The restaurants and coffee shops are great and available everywhere. Stockholm is also known for its food halls, where, by the way, you can find the aforementioned meatballs. Several food halls are available throughout the city. Each offer a large variety of food to choose from and the prices are great. If you're looking for a quick, great quality meal at an amazing price, I highly recommend checking out one of the food halls. One that I've enjoyed is the Hay Market located close to the train station. It's a two-level market featuring foods from around the world. Sweden's currency is the Swedish Krona. Using the US dollar as a comparable, at current exchange rates, 10 US dollars equals approximately 90 krona. 48% of Stockholm's population lists Christianity as their religion, the vast majority of which list Protestant as the denomination. 30% claim no religious affiliation, and 1.5% Islam. As for washrooms, restrooms, or toilets, don't worry about it, you'll easily find one. For those who have watched my videos on Asia, you'll know that I eventually start linking countries and regions by their common history. For example, in Southeast Asia, I connected the history and commonality of Jogakarta, Indonesia, Bangkok, Thailand, and Siem Reap, Cambodia. Be sure to check out my videos on Helsinki, St. Petersburg, Tallinn, and Gdansk to see how this region fits together. As I said in my intro video, if we could remove politics and flags, we'd discover we're not all that different. If you'd like my help designing a regional tour of Scandinavia and Russia, visit my website at steveevanstravel.com. So that's Stockholm, one of my favorite cities. If you've visited Stockholm and feel there's something I've missed, or if you love Stockholm as much as I do, leave a comment below. If there's a country or destination you'd like me to discuss, go ahead and leave a request. I have no set schedule for my travel videos production order, so assuming I've traveled to your requested destination, I'd be happy to prioritize it. And please, if you like this video, click the thumbs up and subscribe button. As well, make sure to click the bell icon so you'll be notified of my new uploads. Until next time, I'm Steve, thanks for watching, and remember, ready, set, 
เก่า